Welcome to this video on how to set up the MultiWii SE version 2.5. Here's a fresh one that I've got out of my spares bin and I'm going to go through the setup from taking it out of the packet to being ready to start plugging wires in into the model. This is a revised version of a video that's been on the channel for quite a while now. The original one here setting up the multiway is becoming up uh, for a couple of years old now and it was the original version of this board, the MultiWii SE version 2.0. The 2.5 is very slightly different, it has additional extra port but it needs one or two things slightly different when you set it up. So the reason for this video is because you can't get that original MultiWii SE version 2.0 board and this is the one that will come if you order one, it's worthwhile putting this video together, particularly as a lot of subscribers are asking me about what you need to set up and how you need to configure it. Before we get into the body of the video, it's worthwhile us talking about the MultiWii platform itself. Now, on the channel, there are tons of videos about the MultiWii, doing everything from how to install Bluetooth, how to set up things like GPS, return to home. There are videos for uh, return to home demos, all kinds of things that have been on the channel over the last couple of years. This has been my go-to flight controller for the last two years, and it has been fantastic. I've loved MultiWii. It's great. I'm now starting to play with other boards that are uh, slightly newer, things like the NAS A32, for example. We have quite a few videos on that now, um, and that has a slightly easier interface to set up. The challenge with the MultiWii is because so that there are so many versions of the boards available now, um, and so many different flavors. Some of them come with USB ports, some of them don't, some of them have different sensors, some of them have different capabilities that because of that, MultiWii can appear a little bit complicated. But if you have a MultiWii SE version 2.5, if you follow this video step by step, by the end of it, you'll be ready to go to the next video, which is about how you wire this thing to your um, multi-rotor, and you'll be getting ready to fly. So, a couple of quick things that we need to talk about first you will need an FTDI adapter. Now they look like this, and this plugs into the side of the board and has a USB port on the side. And this allows us to plug the MultiWii into the computer so that we can program it and set it up. Some of the MultiWii boards have a USB port on the side so that you can connect them directly to your computer. The SE 2.5 doesn't, so we need this board. So if you've ordered one and you haven't got one of these, then you're going to have to just stop the video right there, get one of these things, and you'll be good to go. I tend to order mine off eBay. They're only a handful of pounds or dollars. If you search for FTDI Basic, you'll find one of these guys and you'll uh, be ready to go. So, now we know that, let's talk about a couple of things that you're going to need to have. There are two bits of software that you need in addition to the FTDI adapter. The links are on the screen here. The first is a piece of Arduino software that will allow you to put the firmware onto the board once you've made all the choices. And that can be found at arduino.cc slash en slash main slash software. If you go onto those pages, you'll find the download and the current version, I think it's 1.6. I tend to use 1.5. The next bit you'll need is the MultiWii software itself. And this is what you will use to create the firmware that then you'll upload using the Arduino software. So you go to code.google.com slash p slash MultiWii. The current version is version 2.3. So you need to go to both of those places and download and install both of those bits of software onto your computer. Once you have that and you have your trusty FTDI adapter, you are ready for the next step and to actually configure the board. Now when we come into the software and the configuration, it can look really daunting because what you're actually doing is you're compiling something called an Arduino sketch, which is what the MultiWii firmware actually is. And when you open it, there are lots of tabs, there's lots of syntax and code, and this is the bit where people can get really nervous. 
But don't worry, we only need to know two things and change two basic things to have the flight controller ready to be able to fly. So the things that we need to have figured out before we actually plug the board in and start configuring are what type of multi-rotor you have. So that's either going to be a quadcopter where it has four arms, it'll be a tricopter where it has three arms, or a hexcopter where it has six. It will support things like octocopters and also planes and other pieces as well, but in this video we're just going to concern ourselves with setting it up basically for a multi-rotor. The next thing you need to think about is what kind of speed controllers you have. Now there are basically two types. The first is kind of your standard uh, speed controller and then there are speed controllers that are flashed with something called Simon K firmware. Now what Simon K firmware is about is about making the speed controllers much more responsive and aggressive with the throttle control as well as giving them a defined throttle range and also making sure that things like braking and those other key elements are also turned off too. Now if you have ESCs with Simon K firmware that's great if you don't have Simon K firmware on them that's fine too but you just need to know that before you go on to the next step. So knowing those two things along with the fact we have a Mosiris Multi-Wii SE version 2.5 board means now we can start plugging things together, plugging things into the computer and firing this board up and getting it ready to install. So before we actually start playing with software on the netbook we actually need to plug the FTDI adapter onto the Multi-Wii. So let me take the Multi-Wii out of the package for the first time. So we have the board itself and we also have a couple of cables and you'll notice that some of them are slightly different. So we have one cable where it has it goes from a 3N servo connector to another 3N servo connector and then we have a couple of other cables that go from where all the wires go into one end to separate connectors at the other. Now these are for plugging into the Cirrus SE along this side which is where you connect all of the inputs from the radio receiver into. So the first one um, is throttle um, and then it kind of works its way down. Now we're not going to worry about that for now because that's covered in the next video where it goes through how you actually wire the board up. The thing we're interested in is actually plugging it into the FTDI adapter so we have a USB connector that we can connect it to the computer with. And where you plug this onto, it's pretty straightforward. There are, um, hopefully, there's writing on the board that you have too, but you should be able to see along the bottom it says FTDI and UART. FTDI is the one we want and you plug it on like that. It's that easy. And once we've done that, we can plug a USB cable into the FTDI adapter and into the computer. First time you plug it in, it will auto detect or it should auto detect the FTDI drivers. I have them installed in Windows 7 and uh, Windows 8.1 here and they both work great. Uh, if you don't, then go back to whoever you got your FTDI adapter uh, from for support uh, because it'll take couple of minutes for all the drivers to load. So once you have that ready, it'll appear as a COM port on your computer and we can plug it in. So let's do that now. Let's fire up the netbook and look at the software and then get ready to plug in the board for configuration. So here we are on the netbook. First thing we'll do is just show you where these files are coming from. First one is the Arduino software which um, if we're going to download we would click on the Windows installer. Also if you're having trouble with Arduino 1.6 you can download the previous releases. I'm actually using um, the previous release which is working absolutely fine. The other thing of course is to download the MultiWii software and here's where we said code.google.com slash p slash MultiWii and we've downloaded version 2.3. Now I've installed the Arduino, which will start in a second. There's the zip file that I've downloaded. If I double click on that, you can see that there are actually two folders in there. 
The first is called MultiWii, which is the actual code. The second is called MultiWii Conf, which is the graphical user interface that we'll use to configure the board once we have it set up. I've extracted all of those files and popped them into a little directory called MultiWii 23 on the desktop so I can find them. So let's get the firmware onto the board as the very first step. Now, the board isn't powered on at the moment. You can tell there's no lights on the FTDI adapter or the board itself, so we'll plug it in. So now that's starting up, what we'll do is we'll start Arduino. And the next thing we'll do is we'll actually open the firmware so we can change it. And because we are recording this around the beginning of March 2015, we're using 2.3, but by the time you're looking at this video, there could be later versions. The 2.4 version is already in beta as I'm recording this, so I imagine it'll be out before summer. So we're gonna open this first. We're gonna go into open. We're going to go into desktop. MultiWii 2.3 is the directory. We're gonna go into the MultiWii directory, and in there, there'll be one called MultiWii.ino. There it is, we'll double click on that. And that is all of the software for everything. And if you click in some of these, it looks really, really complicated. And this is where, for some people, they can start to get a little bit nervous. Don't worry about that. We only want one of these many, 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 many tabs. The tab that we want is called config.h. Now, I'm actually going to have to use the hotkeys here to get to that. And here we are in the tab that's called config.h. Now, because I'm using a slightly smaller screen, it's actually just off to the right, just a quirk of the way this works. Now, in config.h, which again, if you can't find, seeing there's alarms, h, eprom.ccp, you just go along here until you find the one that's called config.h. This is where we're going to make the couple of changes before we flash to the board. If you read at the top, it actually tells you what we need to do, but let me go through it at a brief so you don't need to worry about it. First area is called basic setup and that's what we need to do and we must selection, select an option in every block. Some of them are default and set for us, some of them aren't. So if we scroll down a little bit in here, we'll find section one straight underneath basic setup. The first thing we need to do is tell the firmware what kind of frame that we're going to install it into. And this time, I'm going to install it into a Quad X. So to turn that bit of the code on for when we make the firmware, we just delete these two little lines in front of it. So if I put those two slashes back, you'll notice it goes a light color. That means that it's commented out. If that's the one I want, I just delete those two and that then becomes um, black and that's the one I've selected. So that's the first thing we had to know before we came into the software. If we go all the way down, here is the uh, min and max throttle. This is for the ESC settings, which we talked about before. I would say if you're going to use Simon K, then you would want to undelete this one here. If you're not using Simon K, then I would probably keep it where it is. The only other thing we need to do then is define the board types. Now, in the early days of this, you had to go through and manually select all the sensors. It's a lot better now, you can actually just undelete the kind of board that you've got. And here's all the different types of multi-wee board that we can choose from. And if we keep going down here, we'll find one that looks like ours. And we'll uncomment that. So the Cirrus SE version 2.0, in this version of the code, there isn't a Cirrus SE version 2.5, but this will work perfectly. And that's it, that's all we have to do. We just had to uncomment that line there, we just had to double check that the, that the ESC things were right, and we also had to check what frame type we wanted. And that's everything we have to do. Now we're ready to flash the firmware up to the board. So we're going to go into tools, we're going to make sure that the serial port that the FTDI is connected to is selected. And then the other thing we're going to do before we um, upload everything is make sure the board type is right. Now again, for Arduino, there are lots of different boards, but we want to just pick one 
that has the 80 mega 328. So we're going to pick Arduino Pro or Pro Mini 5 volt 16 megahertz with 80 mega 328. That should work fine. And then what we're going to do is click on this upload button. Now we have those two things selected and we're going to compile this firmware into code that can be flashed up and then it's going to go over the FTDI adapter into the board. So let's click upload and I'll fast forward some of this because it can take a little bit of time. So now the code is actually compiling the sketch. It's taking all of this programming that are in that's in each of the individual tabs of this Arduino sketch and turning it into firmware that's going to be ready to put on a Quad X for a Cirrus SE version 2.0 using standard ESCs. Now it's starting to upload that to the board. You can see the lights are flashing on the FTDI connector, which means that it is pushing the information on the board. And when it's finished, it'll tell you that it's done. Now it's done uploading. We saw the board's blue light flash as it's rebooting. And now it is running on that new firmware that we've just uploaded. So we've actually done the hardest part. The next bit is we'll update the uh, bits and pieces and we'll check everything with the GUI. Don't worry about the fact that the blue light is flashing. That's fine. That's because we haven't finished the configuration, but we'll do that now. So let's go and open the graphical user interface and we can actually try out the board and see if it's working. So we go this time we're going to go into the multi week comp program, which is this graphical user interface we're going to use. Pick the operating system we want. Nice to see we have Linux versions and a Mac version as well. This is Windows 7 32 bits, so we're going to go in there and we're going to click on multi week conf. So here's multi week conf. This is what it looks like. And the first thing we need to do here is we're going to have to connect to the board. So again, we're going to click on COM7, which is the COM port for the board. And that says we're connected. We're going to click on read and we're going to click on start. And now we're actually looking at the board in real time. So the first couple of things we need to do is we're going to need to calibrate the uh, magnetometer, the compass that's on the board, and the accelerometer, and that will stop some of the flashing. So let's calibrate the accelerometer first. We need to make sure it is perfectly flat. Let me just make sure it is. Click calibrate accelerometer. Fantastic. And now, when I move the board, you'll notice the blue light has stopped flashing. And as I move the board on the screen, you can actually see it moving around. Pitch and roll is moving. So that's what that blue flashing light means. Next bit that's going to be handy is to calibrate the magnetometer. This will um, then start the blue light flashing like crazy. And what we need to do is basically move the board in all directions as quickly as we can within about 30 seconds. The more you do, the better the reading will be. And you pop it down flat and there it has finished the process. Now, obviously, if you're going to do this for real, you would take an awful lot longer doing that. Now, what that means is that hopefully as I move it around, we're actually pointing in the right direction. So there we go. That's about north. Yep, and that's pretty much what it's saying on the display. So now we have all those basics covered. We can see that if I move the craft to the left and to the right, we've got roll. If I tilt it down and tilt it up, that's all working great as well. And we can also, if we move it around, we can see that the compass is working great. So now we've done all the really hard parts. So what I would recommend is that you go into the next video in the series, which shows you how to connect this board that's been configured up to your quadcopter for both the receiver which is connected down here and also for the motor outputs that are at the bottom so hopefully that's helpful for those of you that have the multi wii se version 2.5 and weren't sure how you set it up thanks for watching please like subscribe and happy flying